What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. I'll have another video out probably later today talking about Joe Judge and everything that got us really excited yesterday, talking about the team coming together. But in this video, to start out the day, I thought it was important to go over some of the free agent acquisitions that the New York Giants just brought in earlier this morning. And I'm not too surprised with either one of these moves when you looked into it and you do your research. And I think both of them stand a pretty good chance of making the New York Giants roster. I mean, of course, right now, the New York Giants don't have the much depth, that much depth on the offensive line. And the wide receiver department, I mean, we've got a bunch of undrafted free agent wide receivers trying to compete to make the last two spots on this roster. Holton has been in the league, uh, formerly played with the Raiders, the Steelers. And in, the thing that stood out to me with Holton before we get into Jalapeno Stands at six foot three. I think he's 180, 185 pounds. Former undrafted free agent out of Cincinnati. He's been in the league for the last four years, from 2016 to 2019, with uh, various stops. He's, I think he's played for the Raiders. He's played for the Steelers. He's been all over. Never. He's not going to do much in terms of catching the football. I don't expect Johnny Holton to make. You know, to, if he makes this team, to be catching footballs from Daniel Jones. Where I think he could make this team is in the special teams department. It is that where he saw an opportunity last year with the Steelers, and he really stood out, read a number of articles. where I think there was a game in October where they said he was amazing in the special teams department in terms of punt covers, things like that. He played the gunner position. Well, who played the gunner position? One of my favorite Giants on last year's roster, and a guy that is out for the year with Cody Core. So I think that is the thinking here by the New York Giants by bringing in Johnny Holton. They look at him as a special teams ace that could come in and maybe get the job done. Why he was cut? Well, I'm not 100% sure. Um... The Steelers did bring in a, a couple of young wide receivers, and maybe that's the case there. I don't know. Regardless, I think he is a guy that maybe could fill in for that Cody Core role that was vacated when he went down with the injury. But by bringing Holton in, if he does, in fact, make this roster, that's going to cut the roster short for some of these undrafted free agents that a lot of you guys are rooting for to make this team. And we'll have to wait and see if the Giants go with six or seven wide receivers Last year, they went with six, so that was my assumption this year that they'd probably go with six, but it's possible they go with seven. But if they go with six and Holton makes this team, well, that's only one undrafted free agent will be cracking the roster for the New York Giants. And at that point, I mean, I think it's down to Benjamin Victor, Alex Bachman, and David Sills. Yesterday, I did my roster prediction video. Sills was at a great training camp, so was Bachman. Those were the two guys I chose. But if Holton were to make it and the Giants were to still go with six, that would only leave room for one, being that, of course, you have Darius Slayton, Golden Tate, Sterling Shepard, and Corey Coleman, who is at a great training camp in his own right. Um, I think there's a good chance Holton makes this team. There's a reason he's been rostered the last four years in the NFL. It's because he provides value um, in the special teams department, uh, specifically last year. And it's something that the New York Giants are going to be looking for, being that they have Joe Judge as their head coach, and they had Cody Core go down with an injury. So I think it's a savvy pickup, and maybe Holton will make this team in, and contribute in that area. Uh, but it is bad news for guys that are undrafted free agents, like I said. As far as Jalapio goes, John Jalapio last year, of course, was the starting center for the New York Giants. He was the starting center the year before, before he went down with an injury. I think he only played like two games, three games, whatever it was, um, before he went down. He beat out Spencer Pulley. Spencer Pulley is not good. We all know this, right? He's a guy that, you know, I thought could have started this year before we received word about Nick Gates and how he was progressing and how the New York Giants gave him a contract extension. Now, Joe Judge, a couple of weeks ago, did come out and say that John Halapio, uh, not John Halapio, rather, Spencer Pulley and Nick Gates were basically dead even in the center competition. I've also read some reports that there's been a couple of, you know, uh, mishaps in terms of snapping the football to Daniel Jones with Nick Gates, being that he's transitioning to the position. But most of the things you've heard from both Joe Judge and Mark Colombo have been incredibly encouraging in terms of Nick Gates being the starter, starting center for the New York Giants. To the point where I think we've all gotten to the point where going into the year we expect Nick Gates to be the starting center for the New York Giants. Um, the former guard, tackle, he's versatile. This will be his first year at the center position. Now, does Halapio coming in change that? Jalapio, like I said, was a starting center for the New York Giants last year, but he was horrible. He had a PFF grade of 56. I think he only surrendered two sacks, but the stats don't tell the whole story. He was bad. There was constant pressure up the middle uh, with him at the center position, and he's coming up an injury. Does him coming in with his experience snapping the ball to Daniel Jones, playing with this offensive line, give him the leg up in terms of being the starting center? I am going to lean with no. Now, this is me guessing. I haven't heard anything, um, but I think what it does do is it really puts Spencer Pulley on the hot seat. Um, 
I think Gates, I still think Gates will be the starting center, but you look at Alapio, I would assume they're going to bring him in on a cost-effective rate. I'm assuming because they brought him in yesterday or two days ago, whenever it was, he probably passed the physical and they, they viewed him as a guy that could step in and at least be a, a suitable offensive lineman. Well, he's going to come at a much co more cost-effective rate than that of a guy like Spencer Pulley. And you went out there, you spent some money in free agency, this would free up some cap. Um, it kind of somewhat offset the move by bringing in Logan Ryan. Uh, Spencer Pulley was due to make $2.75 million this year with no dead cap hit. By bringing in Halep Eo on what I would assume would be a near-league minimum contract, you'd probably be saving about $2 million on this year's cap, allowing yourself to have more flexibility from within season. And, well, Halep Eo beat Pulley out last year, and that should tell you everything you need to know about Spencer Pulley. He's not a very good offensive lineman because we all know that John Alapio is a great in his own right. I still think that Nick Gates will be the starting center for the New York Giants opening day. I could be completely wrong, but he's a guy I'm really looking forward to if he does get that opportunity. I talked about him last night on my live stream. Um, I think Nick Gates is one of the most important players on this year's team if he does, in fact, get that starting center role because it would give the New York Giants the ability, if he is good, uh, to have a cost-effective center over the next two years, you wouldn't have there. You know, you'd be able to use your draft pick on something else in next year's draft. You know, probably in the second round, which is probably where we would have been taking a center. But do I view either one of these guys as a high-impact player in terms of the starting lineup? No, I don't think John Halapio will be starting. But I think there's a very good chance, mainly due to the fact that he's cheaper than Spencer Pulley, that John Halapio could very well make this roster and his experience with the guys on the offensive line. He has played in the middle of both those guards, albeit not very good, and he has snap balls to Daniel Jones. But I still think Gates will be the starter for this New York Giants football team. Holton, like I said, I think he's going to be a special teams contributor. I don't view him as a guy that's going to come in here and catch a lot of balls, but I do think he stands a very good chance to make this roster. And then I think you'll stick a ton of these wide receivers on the practice squad that don't make the team. Of course, the New York Giants and the league in general have been given the ability to have more players on the practice squad due to the COVID virus. Normally it's 10, this year it'll be 16. And I think a lot of these guys that don't quite, quite make the team, whether it be Benjamin Victor, Alex Bachman, David Sills, will be on that practice squad and ready to step in if and when the New York Giants do have injuries in that wide receiver court. Well, hopefully they don't, but... I think that's the line of thinking there. I think Holton makes it because he will be able to contribute in special teams. And I think Jalapio will make it because he's cheaper than Pulley. <laughs> and he's a guy that's played with some of the linemen before. But that's my take on it. As always, guys, if you like what you watch, please subscribe. Drop a comment. Maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.